Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you Monday, May 20th. Talk about the European Open here. A couple of things uh, we want to talk about. First, we're going to talk about Euro. We have German PPI today. We also have um, current account out of Europe. And we have the Bundesbank's monthly report. Uh, so this, these are secondary releases, but will affect Euro a little bit, just based on the fact that um, Euro Euro is going to be a focus this week with these European elections coming up. And so let's just look at this. We have one, two, three, four, five red days in Europe. The thing about these red days is the volatility has been so low, the bars are so small, we could easily have a sixth red day, but we're getting into some unusual patterns here, uh, stuff that we don't often see in foreign exchange. So you just want to be a little bit cautious on the downside. Um, but that said, uh, the picture is still um, rather bearish. Uh, it's bearish because of the story, it's bearish because of yields, and it's also bearish because of dollar CNH, which as dollar CNH goes up, in general, the big dollar also has to go up, so dollars in general tend to go up. Dollar CNH here, 693 and three quarters. Uh, we printed back up to 695 overnight may have printed the top there a second time up there has failed uh, we're certainly not getting on board with a turn yet but we're just watching this um, as a proxy for what else is going on out there higher dollar cnh is risk off higher dollar cnh is dxy also higher um, that said with europe the next support is 111.35, and then the very, very important support is uh, 111, the figure, which would be the year's low. So we're not a million miles from it, half a percent, let's call it. It feels like a million miles from this kind of volatility, uh, but this is something we need to watch. I don't think um, this is going to get through there today. What is likely to happen, I think, for a range break is sort of a crazy parliamentary election result where we have lots of right right wingers and parliamentarian uh, right wingers and populists who who infiltrate European Parliament. Uh, that'll be very negative euro, and we'll get a gap open on Monday. So. We're going to trade this uh, on the left-hand side, but we're going to express it through BTPs here. So BTP printed a turn bar, and so we'll be selling high ones on BTPs. Uh, we're core short. Number of reasons we don't we don't like to own BTPs, um, but you could express it with BTPs with Euro Dollar or with Euro Yen. Euro Yen printed all the way up to one twenty three eighteen. Um, the problem with Euro Yen and, and Euro Dollar is there can just be some weird squeezes this week. I think there's more. The story's stronger on um, BTP's left hand side. But that's just uh, personal preference here. Anyway, let's go to stocks. 2900, we think, is a ceiling. This sort of not super important line, but it just kind of is 2890. Um, seems to be capping things what you want to do is fade the edges here right so make sure you have room to sell up towards 2900 so if you're not short now if you sell 2871s you got to realize you're going to leave a 30 point stop 30 handle stop which most of you shouldn't be doing the risk reward is upside down um, so just leave it right and even though doesn't look like, look like there's any chance in hell we're going to trade 2890 you know we've traded 2890 twice in the last two days uh just on ridiculous uh upside volatility so i mean it really looks like a lot of people are 
playing left hand side and getting stopped playing left hand side and getting stopped what we want to avoid is the getting stopped part so we're tactically playing left hand side and then rebuying portions of this position to keep adding to our average and even if you only have one or two on as a core it's better than having filling the boat and selling 20 um, with a tight stop and getting jammed every day um, the load the boat trade is probably going to be 200 day moving average until then assume it's going to range and sell high ones dollar swiss is easing higher with euro lower and dollar cnh higher this is not acting like a risk proxy at all we did have some good news uh, fiscal news in switzerland over the weekend with our elections uh, the people voted to sort of keep Switzerland as a tax haven for the large corporations in the world. This is obviously good for Switzerland, um, but like anything Swiss and foreign exchange, no one really trades anymore, so it's just mentioning it because I live here, I guess. Um, what else is out there, Aussie? We had these elections where the right-wingers pulled this shock shock win uh, we don't see this as as incredibly uh, bullish at all um, so we're sellers of Aussie between uh, 21 and, and 51 we don't think this is going to get back through 69 60 so core short Aussie is the way for us at best this is just status quo continuation um, of what is a negative spiral in the Australian economy and that region in general with China suffering and trade war and etc cetera, etc cetera. so we're sellers of Aussie um, between 20 and 50 we already we already sold 20s last night we bought figures we're gonna resell um, and in fact this is our trade of the week short Aussie so let's see how that goes what else? Dollar CAD, real pain in the ass last week. Wow. Traded up to 135.15. Finally, the steel tariff news came out. Traded back down to 60. Now we're on our way lower. We expect this to rain tra range trade. It's a holiday in Canada today, so keep that in mind. But eventually this week, 133.80 is probably going to go. People have overlooked the fact that the economic numbers in, in Canada are very strong. Oil is just hanging around 64 bucks, uh, 60, 65 is fine for much of uh, the oil coming out of Canada. Probably not a lot of the oil sands oil, but other oil coming out of Canada uh, is fine. The economy is doing better than people think. Uh, and so eventually this is going to bleed into foreign exchange price and dollar cad should eventually go lower finally Aussie yen it's kind of the same trade as Aussie we like selling this we're gonna wait um, because dollar yen seems to have broken I don't know why we're above 110 we are in a downtrend in, in dollar yen but now we're so far from resistance the big resistance which is 111.09 there's not much to do here this weekly bar looks like a turn at the bottom of a range now we're mid-range there's really nothing to do here we were hoping 110 would hold um, just on a strategic view we don't actually have any have any dogs in this fight but look for sideways you want to sell really high ones uh, with dollar yen uh, and if you're long, this is a pretty strong open after a funny close above 110. We've held, we're holding up here, so this looks like it might drift higher. Anyway, I've said enough. Uh, we're selling high ones in equities. Uh, we are going to be core short Aussie today. And we are watching this German PPI current account news from the Booba. Uh, and also, we won't be watching, but German PPI. Chairman Powell is talking 1 a.m. Uh, European time. So 
and we have policy minutes out of Australia, 3.30 a.m. So late New York, there's some very interesting releases. Uh, the rest of the day should be sort of range bound. Pick your spots, grab some cash, and have a good Monday.